Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my guide on Kirara, the adorable delivery cat girl we've been waiting for. This video is packed with a discussion of her kit, talents, constellations, artifact and weapon builds, and team comps to help you make the most of her service. Let's get into it. I'm Kirara, a courier for Inazuma's Komani Express. Kirara is a 4-star Denjo sword unit whose primary role is a shielder that scales on HP. While she can lead into a more damage-oriented playstyle, her ultimate strengths and team roster contribution is in filling in the role of a 4-star dedicated Denjo shielder. We'll go through her talents to see how she works. Kirara's normal attacks are a 4-hit combination of physical attacks with a claw-slashing charged attack. These are very negligible aspects of her kit, so let's move on to her more important skill and burst. Kirara's skill, Meow Deer Kick, can be pressed or held for different effects. Pressing it deals AoE Dendro damage and generates the Shield of Safe Transport, which scales on her max HP. As a shield, it has fairly good absorption strength, and as a Dendro shield, it has 250% effectiveness against Dendro damage, which can be especially useful against Bloom's self-damage or Dendro consecrated beasts. This shield lasts 12 seconds by default, but it can actually be stacked with a new shield and have its duration reset if you cast Kirara's skill again while a prior shield exists. However, the maximum stackable shield health does have a limit, which is basically 160% of the original absorption. Alternatively, the hold skill generates her shield and activates the Neko Parcel state for 10 seconds, befitting her delivery girl character. During this state, she has enhanced movement and climbing capabilities. She also deals Denjo damage into opponents she crafts into up to once every 0.5 seconds. The Dendro application of Kirara's parcel state hits follow standard ICD rules, but since it hits at intervals of 0.5 seconds, it can proc the 3 hit rule quite frequently. Against one target, it can apply Dendro roughly 7 to 8 times in a full duration. This state can last up to 10 seconds, or you can press the skill button again to end it earlier. Either way, she does a final claw attack, which deals slightly higher AoE Dendro damage than her press kick. However, the longer you stay in this mode, the longer the cooldown will be maxing at 12 seconds. You cannot do normal or charged attacks too, which prevents some synergies with certain teammates. It also gets cancelled prematurely if you dash, which also doesn't make her do the final claw strike. Once you unlock her first ascension passive, her parcel state gets an additional shield stacking effect. Each enemy hit during her parcel state grants a stack of reinforced packaging, which can be triggered every 0.5 seconds up to 3 stacks. When her parcel state ends, the packaging stacks with her base shield and resets its duration. Each stack's shield is worth 20% of the Mountier shield HP, so getting 3 stacks is a 60% increase for her max shield HP. That's why, in theory, her maximum shield absorption is worth 160% of the base shield health in order to accommodate her A1 stacks. Basically, if you hold her skill and hit a couple of times, you produce a stronger shield and extend its duration. As for particle generation, the press skill generates 3 dendro particles, and this, combined with a relatively short cooldown, gives her some nice dendro battery capabilities as she can also funnel particles to other dendro units. Meanwhile, the hold skill parcel state generates one particle and it seems to have a particle generation cooldown of either 4 or 5 seconds. If you max out the duration and hit enemies enough, you can generate up to 3 particles. Then the final hit generates 3 more particles. So if you do enter the parcel state, try not to dash cancel. Otherwise, she won't generate those 3 particles from the final hit. Now you might wonder, does her passive, particle generation, and extra damage make it worth staying long in her hold skill? If you do plan to use her as a sort of on-field DPS, then you will have to since most of her damage and reactions come from her hold skill. But in a role where she's meant to be supporting your team, then in most cases it's not really worth staying in the entire duration. If you're using her as a shield support, the trade-off is that your rotation gets extended, which likely actually results in a DPS loss. It's also possible your press skill shield is sufficient protection, and using a sacrificial sword can let you max out the shield absorption quickly anyway. A possible in-between solution is to hold it so that you can generate one dendro particle and get in a few hits, then end it with a final kick for three particles, totaling four particles generated. However, that still adds a second or two in your rotation, but if you're not really strict with rotations or want to guarantee maximum shielding, then it's fine. Next, Kirara's Burst, Surprise Dispatch, costs 60 energy with a 15 second cooldown. Casting it smashes enemies with her special delivery package, dealing AoE Dendro damage. Then it scatters 6 cat bombs that explode upon enemy contact or when they expire after 12 seconds. The initial multiplier is surprisingly high at first glance. However, like her skill, it also scales purely on attack, so with an HP build, this really won't do much damage either. The cat bomb properties might be worth noting as well. The hitbox 
can be wonky sometimes, as I've noticed enemies look like they're standing on it, but it won't explode. Enemy attacks can sometimes propel them away too. You can push them around, and with Kazaha, Sucrose, Jean, or Animal Traveler's abilities, they can suck in the bombs. Unfortunately, Venti's burst cannot. However, her burst isn't really that important to her role as a shielder. What it mainly offers is a bit of damage and some potential to apply Dendro while she's off-field by triggering the bombs. The advantage of not being burst dependent is that building energy recharge isn't really necessary to fulfill her main duty as a defensive unit. Kirara's 4th Ascension passive also increases the damage of her skill and burst based on her max HP. However, since she's not expected to output much damage in the first place, this passive isn't very relevant. And if you do build her as a DPS, you won't be focusing on HP stats anyway, which also reduces the potency of this passive. So when examining her kitten role, it's clear that Kirara is made to be a shielder with very light denjo application. She primarily takes an off-field role where you swap Kirara in to activate her shield, burst if possible, then swap out to rotate other units. Her base kit doesn't even offer any teammate buffs. I see her as a unit you can slot in if you value comfort way more than increasing your team's overall damage. If that's what you're looking for, then that's largely what Kirara offers. However, if you are building Kirara as a DPS, most likely as a spread DPS, then that would involve maximizing her on-field skill time and burst damage. But do note that her base damage multipliers scale purely on attack, and building her for damage will require sacrificing HP stats for attack, crit, and EM instead, making her shield more ineffective. If that's what you want to accomplish, just temper your expectations, as she won't output anywhere near the same amount of damage that an actual dedicated Denjo DPS can. Personally, I would focus on her shielding role as that is her best strength, but of course, you're free to attempt other build routes or play styles as long as you know what to expect. For Kirara's talent priority, you want to prioritize her skill as it's her main utility. Leveling her burst will give it better damage scaling, but since its usage is optional in rotations, leveling it can also be optional. Then you can leave her basic attack talent alone to save resources. Since you're relying on her max HP for her shield, you also want to level her to 90 to get the highest base HP possible. Kirara fulfills her basic defensive function at C0, but let's see what her constellations add to her kit. C1 lets her burst create one extra cat bomb for every 8,000 HP, which caps at four bombs. It's just a bit more burst damage and more opportunities to trigger reactions. For C2, her hold skill can give party members a weaker version of your shield when you crash into them. It's practically a constellation designed for co-op. C3 increases her skill level by three, increasing her skill damage and shield health. C4 makes the shielded active character to trigger a dendro attack on the enemy by using a normal charged or plunge attack. This attack is considered burst damage, can only trigger every 3.8 seconds, and applies dendro on hit. This constellation can be valuable when using Kirara with the 4-piece Deepwood set. Since Deepwood's resistance shred only lasts for 8 seconds, Kirara isn't able to reliably refresh it due to her lack of off-field application aside from her cat bombs. With C4, at least she has a more reliable way to refresh the Deepwood effect. However, it requires her shield to be active, and due to the single target attack of C4, this will not be as effective against enemy mobs. Note as well that since this is considered burst damage, it won't work with keeping up the 4-piece tenacity while she's off-field since that requires skill damage to trigger its 4-piece effect. Anyway, C5 increases her burst level by 3, and finally, C6 allows her to provide a 15 second elemental damage bonus buff to all party members by using her skill or burst. It's a nice addition to her utility for a team DPS boost, but nothing particularly game-changing. Let's move on to Kirara's artifact builds, which are pretty straightforward. We'll start with her stats. A full HP shield support build is practically just slapping HP main stats on her to get as thick of a shield as possible. Specific exceptions could be made for a crit rate circlet if she's using a fab sword and you're barely getting any from her substats. Generally speaking, an ER sans is not that necessary on Kirara since her shield utility is via her skill, but you could make the case if she's using the 4-piece noblesse set. Alternatively, since her burst cat bombs could help refresh or extend the deep woods 4-piece effect while she's off field, you can target more ER to help with that. As for the substats, HP is your main target, and ER if necessary. Crit rate helps if she's using Fab Sword. EM or attack stats help increase her personal damage, but are a much lower priority. All in all, the most convenient and efficient way to build her is with an HP focus build. You might also be considering if she wants more EM in a Nilu Bloom team, presumably to increase her bloom damage. 
Generally speaking, she won't be triggering blooms as often since it's more likely and preferable that Hydro is the primary trigger, so prioritizing HP for thicker shields to tank the self-bloom damage can be more sensible. However, you could try mixing in EM main stats if you feel like you want to increase whatever bloom reactions she can trigger as long as her shield is still comfortable enough, but by default, you can just stick to a full HP build. If you do want to build her as an on-field spread DPS, then build her with typical attack, EM, dendro damage bonus, and crit stats that dendro DPSs also want. Having ER on her would also be good to maximize her burst damage too, but it's more recommended to get it from substats rather than her sands. Since she'll have more on-field time to catch particles, her ER requirements won't be that high anyway. Aside from ER substats, look for crit, EM, and attack rolls too. Next are her artifact sets. Support focus sets will be your general go-to options for quicken and bloom-based teams. If no one else is utilizing the 4-piece deepwood on your team and it relies heavily on dendro damage, then this will be your default option. Just be mindful that the dendro resistance shred only lasts for 8 seconds. Kirara's only means of applying dendro off-field are her cat bombs or C4. Without those, the resistance shred can have some downtime unless you're using a quick swap team where she can easily swap in and reapply the resistance shred. Another option is the 4-piece noblesse set, which will want you to have enough ER to burst every rotation to consistently get the attack buff. This is also better for aggravate teams where electro units are the main source of your damage since the 4-piece deepwood does not benefit aggravate reactions. A third option is the 4-piece instructor set to buff your entire team's damage. It's great for quicken teams, but a bit harder to use in bloom teams due to dendro more likely being the aura rather than the trigger. So if you're using it in a bloom team, you have to ensure that Kirara herself can trigger a bloom reaction. Either way, just note that the user needs to trigger a reaction while on field to proc or refresh the effect and that it doesn't stack with other instructor users. If you just want to focus completely on her shielding, two-piece HP sets are always an option. You can combine them or pair with other sets like ER or just whatever has the best main and substats. You might be wondering if the 4-piece tenacity is a good option. However, the only way she can keep up the effect is through dealing her hold skill damage since tenacity requires skill damage specifically to trigger. But from off-field, she has no way of consistently refreshing it and the buff only lasts 3 seconds per proc so it will have very bad uptime. Even in her parcel state, it won't have much practical use since team synergy with her parcel state is very limited as of now and since it's inefficient to farm, I wouldn't recommend using it. And just in case you're considering it, the 2-piece retracing Bolad's shield strength bonus will not apply when Kirara is shielding other teammates. You can check out my video on shield strength later to understand how it works. If you're also considering a spread DPS build, then let's just quickly go through her set options. If no one else is using Deepwood, use it on Kirara as the Dendro Resistance Shred is very valuable. If another unit can use the Deepwood set, then you can use the other offensive sets on Kirara. The 4-piece Gilded Dreams is your next best full set option as it gives a lot of EM and some attack. However, 2-piece combos of the Deepwood, EM, attack, and even ER sets with really good substats can be very competitive against a full Gilded set. For Kirara's support weapons, her options are pretty simple, though a bit limited. The craftable sapwood blade is the free-to-play default option. You can take advantage of its effect by triggering a reaction to create the leaf, then having your DPS pick it up for the EM buff. Otherwise, Festering Desire can be an alternative free-to-play option if you have it and would rather not craft the sapwood blade. For gacha weapons, my top 4-star recommendation is the Sacrificial Sword. It lets her easily stack her shield thanks to its cooldown reset effect, as well as quickly generate more dendro particles. However, you'd ideally want it at R4 or R5 though so that its cooldown refresh effect can trigger consistently in 20 seconds or shorter rotations. If it's not at high refinement, then its cooldown refresh will be triggered only every other rotation. A second very close recommendation is the Favonia Sword. It can generate extra universal particles to help battery your teammates, which you might favor for addressing the team's energy needs. Though you'd want to get some crit rate stats to make this proc more reliably, and if you really want to, you can enter her hold skill mode to fish a crit hit. Both of their main stats are similar anyway, so basically, if you want a stronger shield, go for the Sack Sword. But if you want the energy utility, go for the Fav Sword. We don't have any 4-star HP swords at the moment, but hopefully we'll get one when Fontaine comes around. For more premium choices, the key of Kajni's suit would be her general best-in-slot weapon. It gives a ton of HP for her shield, and you can hold her skill to trigger the passive effect, which grants her and her teammates an EM buff. Alternatively, there's also the Freedom Sworn. Its high attack and EM main stats can help boost Kirara's reaction damage, but as a support weapon, it's mainly there to buff your teammates' normal charged and plunge attack damage and give an attack bonus. If you're considering making Kirara a spread DPS, then generally speaking, the same weapons I'd recommend 
depend on someone like Al Haytham, who's billed as a spread DPS, would also apply. So to keep this guide more concise, you can just refer to those build videos for similar DPS suggestions. Just remember that Kirara's main dendro damage and reaction sources are her skill and burst, so any weapon effects that apply to normal or charged attacks would be ineffective. Finally, let's go through Kirara's team synergy. For the most part, she can be slotted into teams as a general defensive shield unit. Just remember that without her C4 or her taking significant on-field time, Kirara's off-field dendro application is limited, which limits some synergies too. Another thing to note is that Kirara won't be contributing much damage when built to focus on her shielding. So in content like Spiral Abyss, you want to make sure that her three other teammates are really geared towards outputting enough damage to clear. Otherwise, you may want to opt for an alternative defensive unit that can better enable or contribute to team DPS. I'll summarize some general notes on her potential team templates. Starting with Quicken teams, which can be adapted into Quick Bloom teams with a Hydro unit, Kirara acts as an off-field shielder and can use certain equipment to further buff her teammates. One big selling point is that if you don't have Baiju, she's your only option for a Dendro shielder, and you might want the comfort and interruption resistance she provides. It's possible to forgo a healer completely, who can instead slot into your other Abyss team. Her abilities also follow a 15 second cooldown time, so in 15 second rotation, she can slot in quite smoothly. However, one noticeable caveat is that she has poor dendro application from off-field. So unless she swaps in on skill cooldown, it's hard to rely on her for always keeping up the quicken aura or to refresh the deep woods resistance shred, especially against enemy mobs. But with C4, she can at least have more consistent off-field application in single target scenarios. To address this, you may want to comp her with another dendro unit with more persistent application. In many quicken teams I tried her in, I've found her full shield build to provide ample protection, and her shield duration is generally enough to protect DPS units during their on-field time. On a Sino team in particular though, where she can't easily be swapped in, Kirara's shield duration won't cover his entire field time. This can leave him vulnerable towards the end of his rotation, especially if she's the only defensive unit on the team. Of course, if you think you don't need her utility or would rather opt for a defensive unit that also has better off-field dendro application like Yao Yao, then Kirara becomes a less desirable option. If you do plan on making her an on-field spread DPS, then you'd follow the same team templates of usual dendro DPSs with teammates that are geared to support Kirara. But since her shield will be thin due to a DPS build, just make sure you have extra healing or shielding from other supports to keep her alive. Next, Kirara can be comped into a Nilu Bloom team where her Dendro shield can help a lot against the Bountiful Core's self-damage. If you're using teammates that are flexible in their field time and swapping, Kirara can insert her skill on cooldown to refresh her shield and add Dendro application. This would ideally be a double Dendro, double Hydro team since Kirara as a solo Dendro will result in slower core generation. If your rotation allows for high uptime on her shield, Kirara can protect the team relatively well, giving you the option of going healerless. Slotting in Kirara in regular Killer Bloom teams, and by extension Burgeon or Hyper Bloom teams, is possible, but it's not advisable to make her the only Denjo applicator. Again, Kirara's main consideration is that her off-field application isn't that good, and to turn her into a consistent Denjo source, she needs to enter her hold skill mode. However, she won't synergize with Singcho or Yelan since she cannot do normal attacks in this state either. A possible solution would be to use a Hydro applicator that doesn't need normal attacks to proc their application, but the ones we do have aren't that ideal to apply Hydro and generate cores quick enough, especially for a Burgeon or Hyper Bloom team. That's not to say it isn't possible, as you can technically try using Barbara, whose Hydro ring can be carried by Kirara, or Ayato's Burst or Kokomi's Jellyfish. But again, their applications might be too slow for optimal use. What likely ends up happening is that Kirara could just be paired with another Dendro unit with better off-field or on-field Dendro application, and she will largely provide the comfort of shielding while also unlocking Dendro resonance. One more beneficial synergy that I'd like to mention is that Kirara can make a decent dendro battery since she can front load three dendro particles with her press skill, which can potentially be funneled to another teammate such as Al Haytham. Especially considering that Kirara's burst can be optional in some cases, she isn't losing much by giving those particles to someone else. Anyway, that's going to be all for this guide on our brand new Denger Shielder. Let me know in the comments what you think of Kirara, whether you already have her, or if you're hoping to snipe her from the current banners. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care! Oh, by the way, wanna try touching my tails? I'm pretty sure they've gotten longer.